Hello guys, uh, Quarko here. Uh, a few days ago, we did the poll for the uh, 15k subscribers on uh, YouTube, and uh, White Spirit won the poll with 36%. So we're gonna be releasing five pro tips for White Spirit right after this. So enjoy the video, guys. The first pro tip will be about items. Uh, I'm gonna quickly talk about the starting items, which will most of the time just be like three branches quelling tango and uh, fair fire you can do some variation of you know buying like a circlet to go into a null just trade three branches into like a bottle boots it's like the most standard and then there's pretty much you know like two three routes you can go um the three three main ones are are you gonna buy yules first are you gonna buy kaya Sanch first or are you gonna buy agonims first right now the most Common ones are, I would say, Kaya Sanj and Yules, just because I think they're nicer to build than Aghanims first right now. Um, so Yules first, I would buy against heroes that you need to actually catch, like if you play against some Queen of Pain mid, if you play against like Puck mid, for example. Even like Ember Spirit, um, Bad Rider, you know, those types of heroes, Lina too. Uh, then I would definitely go Yules first. Or if you generally just lack like catch and stuns in your team. I would also buy Yules first. Actually, in the game, I, I played Void Spirit on stream. As you guys can see, I bought the Yules first. If you just look at the heroes, they have a Puck, they have a Windrunner, they have a Weaver also. All these heroes, like, pretty hard to catch, right? Um, uh, if you look at my team, I mean, we have a Bean Sleep, <laughs> we have a Night Soccer Q, right? Like, there's not really that much, like, to go for. So if you buy, like, if you buy Kaya Sound first, to maybe live if you get coiled or something, sure, you might live, but, like, you're not really gonna catch anyone this game. So in, in these types of games, Yules first is like so incredibly good in my opinion. The item build for me most of the time will be Yules, Kaya Sanj into Aghanims. If you're allowed to do that build, that is really good. What I mean with allowed is if you don't have to buy an Aeon disc, if you, don't, if you don't have to buy a BKB, that will be very situation dependent. But most of the time I think you can easily buy Yule, Kaya Sanj and then you will have to, you know, if you die in like two seconds in team fights, then you will have to probably buy an Aeon Disc. I think on White Spirit, you can almost always get by without buying like a BKB. You can buy, you can just buy an Aeon Disc instead, because um, you you have so much, you know, so many spells to to dodge spells after Aeon Disc. You have like Simulate, you have two jumps, you have a you you have a Yules, you know. There's a lot of things you can do um, when your Aeon Disc props and you have the Serious Resistance. I think after you have like two or three core items, I think getting the shard is like pretty value. I think the shard is really nice just for dodging and also I think the damage is just like nice. Your, your dissimulate will do like six, seven hundred damage and will also stun when you're 25. Pretty much how you get how you will get most CS is um, you hit you you will CS with you know auto attacks or with your shield. That will be your main your main your main harass harassing spell and also your main way of CSing. How I would do it personally is I usually always you can shield first and then instant hit, or you can inst uh, you can hit and then instant shield. I don't think there's any difference. Um, that's that's like a really easy way to secure CS because like with those two things combined, you have like 150, 160, 170 damage, which makes it really easy to get CS. And you should almost always get every range creep with White Spirit, just because I think it's so easy with the shield, with the resonant pulse. Um, so that's like your main way of actually harassing and uh, you know getting CS. It's really easy to hit the other guy with the shield and also to get CS with it. <clears throat> so definitely do that. Another way to arrest the opponent is with your add a remnant. There's a few ways you can use a remnant. Like when you're pushing the wave into him, like you're shoving the wave into his face, into his tower, you can just place a remnant to his like natural path of walking. That makes it like pretty easy to dodge. So what I usually do is if I see that he goes for a deny, then when the creep is like 20, 30%, 20% HP, I use a remnant, and then I instant hit the creeps when it dies, like before it dies, to get the last hit, and then he will also get instant remnant after. I think that's the easiest way, and also a really effective way to, to use the remnant in the lane, because then he will get pulled back into your creep wave, and the creeps will also attack him, right? So he will he will get harassed with your attacks, the remnant, and also the creeps hitting him. So that, that is like, other than the shield, the most amount of damage you can you can actually do to him. Make sure you guys actually take the runes, because White Spirit is a very mana, he needs a lot of mana, like maybe mana in 10-0. Alright, uh, the third, did I even announce the second point? 
the third pro tip will be about uh, voice for spell usage and team fighting. So we're gonna go over that right now. So basically, it, it will kind of depend on you know the items that you have. Um, but most of the time, if you're catching a hero, you will use one jump into yield into other remnant on that hero. Like if you're catching a puck, you will probably not be in range without using, you know, one ulti charge. So that will be like what you do. So the most standard expel usage in like skirmishes will be like you use one ulti charge. The target is then slowed really, really hard. And then you use other rem remnant on top of him because um, he's so slowed. And then you use like shield dissimulate or dissimulate shield doesn't really matter. Um, that is like your most easiest spell combo will be that. I usually just focus on like catching the elusive heroes with Yules and other element in fights. Or um, if you have other types of initiation, like if you have like an LC duel, then I would try to just dump all my spells in the target. So what I usually do is like remnant uh, astral, astral step in, add the remnant, shield, dissimulate. When you come out of dissimulate, you, uh, you astral step out again. Because you, you, all your spells will be on cooldown, so you don't want to be in the fight, right? You can do all your bursts in like this matter of like 2 seconds, 2.5 seconds. You can have like 1,500 uh, magical magical bursts, you know? And then you, you just chill in the teamfight. You, you play like the outer sides of the teamfight when all your spells will be on cooldown. I, I would say Whitespirit is like pr a pretty kitey hero in teamfights. You don't want to be like all up in their faces all the time. You, you do want to do that when you have all your spells up. But when they're cooldown, you know, you, you just you kind of just chill a bit. The fourth pro tip will be uh, timings and power spikes. So I think White Spirit's early game power spikes are actually the runes and level six. I think starting at six minutes, you know, actual real runes spawn. So I think if you get any any like haste, invis, dd, you can pretty much no matter what kill side lanes. And also with your level six, you have a lot of kill potential on the enemy mid hero. That is pretty much your first timing that you should try to use. You know. If the enemy hero is like an SF mid or something, you can call over support uh, and then easily kill the SF with like two steps. You have a lot of burst damage level 6. Or uh, try to either just 50 50 the 6 minute, 8 minute, 10 minute rune, or try to you know coordinate with your supports to get the runes. I think it's very important for White Spirit to get active runes because it makes it really easy for you to gank with it. And then pretty much the next timing, I, I think it's like your first real item, you know. You're like, you're like a strong hero, but. After some ganks and, and stuff, you kind of want like the Yule or Kaya Sanj to like really accelerate in damage or pick up potential. So I would say the next timing is like either Kaya Sanj or, or the Yules. Obviously the Yules will come faster. I think the 21 with Kaya Sanj is like really nice. 12% spell implication. And then you will also have like a Kaya Sanj, which is like, what is it, like 16 or something? Yeah, it's 16 from Kaya Sanj, so that's like 28% spell lamp. And you will probably have like a null and uh, and maybe some neutral item. So I, I probably always end up at like 33, 30, 35 percent spell amp, which is insane. I feel really good when I'm like level 20. I have Kaya's Hunch and maybe have a shard. I think that that's pretty much it for Whitesford's power specs. That's like that's like when you should tell your team, you know, you're ready to fight or you're ready to smoke, you're ready to you push towers. Those are like the times you should be looking out for. And uh, yeah, you can also you know, farm a bit towards. Uh, which brings me to my last point, which will be how to farm with it. So, how do you actually farm with this hero? So, you know, when you mid, you can easily stack the small camp. That's like a really easy way to boost your farm early on, is stacking the small camp when you play mid. You can also stack it with the remnant, by the way. If you don't reach it, you can just remnant on the creep, and the creeps will get dragged out of the camp. Yeah, other than that, it's like, kind of how you farm with this hero is, you push out mid, wait for real runes, you farm the small camp, um, and then... I, when I when I hit six, I usually look at the side lanes like a lot. If I can, if there's kill potential, which sides I can actually kill, that's what I would look out for. If I can kill the side lanes, if you know, if I have to wait for rune stuff like that, like uh, if side lanes are not killable with a rune, then I don't gank if the kill is like way too low. You know, if there's like a way too low chance of that working out. I just don't do it. Uh, I just and I I just wait for a rune. Um, that's kind of what I do. Definitely try to look out for on side lanes. So like, have your camera move towards the side lanes quite a bit to see what happens, um, and then try to uh, try to check the runes. You know, farm the small camp. That that's that will be like your early early game um, farm. And also, yeah, the the gold from kills will be quite important. So uh, that is like pretty much how you farm like the first like 10 to 15 minutes on this hero. 
after that, it's like your hero is really nice at pushing out ways with uh, Max's Immolate and uh, Resonant Pulse. I believe if you have one or two nulls, you can one shot, you can almost always one shot the wave with it. So that's like just like the easiest way to get to, to farm the mid game. When, not, when nothing happens, I usually just push out like side lanes because uh, you're pretty hard at killing, like uh, at being killed, sorry, um, this hero, right? Like you need to, you, you have to simulate, you have two jumps. Um, the hero is just like pretty annoying to kill on side lanes. That would be like 15 plus, 20 plus, you know, when your team just wants to, when your team can't fight or something, then that would be like the way to go. Uh, I definitely did it in this game. I pushed side lanes quite a bit. I actually went BOT for that because I know this game will be pretty slow. Most of your gold will come, like I would say like maybe 70% gold will come from farming, creeps, and the rest will be from killing heroes. Um, but don't be afraid to hit creeps on this hero, because this hero scales incredibly well to the mid and late game, I think. I think it scales better than Ember, to be honest. That will pretty much conclude the five pro tips on widespread. Uh, I hope you guys, uh, hope you guys liked it, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's kind of the first time uh, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of doing this for YouTube. So, any suggestions? Any any critic is welcome. And yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys for subscribing and watching.